Now have the privilege of introducing Dr. Nicole Bossa. Um, Dr. Bossa and her husband, Alan Abondo, uh, have been the bedrock and backbone of Cedar Park Regional Medical Center Surgery Department uh, since the opening of the hospital almost six years ago. Um, both of the individuals are incredibly talented surgeons, um, but more importantly, they're just good people. Uh, I'm proud to say that they're my friends, uh, and I am uh, honored to have them uh, at the hospital, as well as have the opportunity to work with those outstanding individuals, both professionally as well as personally. Um, Dr. Bossa received her medical education at Rush Medical College in Chicago, um, Charles Drew University in Los Angeles, and UCLA in the University of Southern California. After her general surgery residency, she completed fellowships in minim minimally invasive surgery and bariatric surgery. She has also been recognized as a teacher and mentor. In 2006 through 2007, she received UCL UCLA's Outstanding Teacher Award. Today, she will provide information about effective treatment of obesity with bariatric surgery. Please welcome an outstanding surgeon and my friend, Dr. Nicole Bassa. Thanks so much, Brad. That's uh, really nice words that, that you've given, and we really appreciate it. We've been loving working with Brad over the past year. He's made so many changes in the hospital, so many positive changes that that's definitely noticed, and um, we're happy to work with him. Um, so I'm going to give you a talk on Bariatric Surgery 101, um, just kind of an informational talk about the surgeries that we perform and then some of our outcomes that we've, we've had here at Cedar Park Regional. Um, so just a little breakdown, um, basically bariatric surgery options and uh, some of the outcomes of different bariatric procedures. And then our program outcomes over the last five years. This is our fifth annual um, fashion show and actually we have two of our guests. Um, one is um, Joanna Reyes, which I'll talk to you about later, but she's our first uh, bariatric case at Cedar Park Regional. So Joanna, if you want to stand up for a second. <laughs> yeah. And um, actually, and Gail Frick also is our first uh, gastric sleeve at the hospital. So if you'd like to stand up. Uh, Uh, we'll also talk about a new frontier in bariatric surgery, uh, robotic surgery. And um, just as Dixie was talking about diet and exercise, exercise is key in terms of losing weight along with diet. And all the, the models, all the bariatric patients can attest to this. It's hard work. You know, bariatric surgery is not a quick fix. You're not going to have the surgery and drop 100 pounds right off the bat. You have to do the correct eating and have exercise along with that to sustain your weight loss. So when people say, oh, it's too drastic, I can't do bariatric surgery, you know, it's, it's not a magic bullet, it's not a, you know, a quick fix. It's hard work and, and to be successful, you have to do ongoing work for the rest of your life. Um, so this study actually describes weight loss with diet and exercise versus uh, bariatric surgery and you can see if you you get to a certain weight if your body mass index is over 40 or if you're over about hundred pounds overweight it's very difficult to lose that weight successfully you tend to do these whole yo-yo diets that we kind of all go through and it's a lot harder when you're hundred pounds overweight so you need something that gives you an extra tool to help you to lose weight and what this study shows is it basically has two groups and um, the group that had bariatric surgery are, is this bold line right here. And these patients basically did uh, diet and exercise. And you can see over the long term, the uh, patients who did diet and exercise, they pretty much regained their weight by the sixth year. They pretty much went back to normal. Um, and then you see the bariatric surgical patients starting at a higher weight sustaining it over the course of six years and, and for a lifetime. So it shows that if you reach a certain weight point, uh, definitely surgery is helpful to help you maintain your weight loss over the long term. And I actually have a lot of patients who come up to me and say, 
you know, I'm sick and tired of this whole yo-yo thing. I can't go through it any longer. I need some extra help. And that's, and that's what the surgery helps them to do. Um, these are the indications for bariatric surgery. So it's a weight that's uh, a basically a, by a body mass index, which is using basically your height and your weight. If it's greater than 40, which is about 100 pounds overweight, or if your BMI is a little bit less than that with a medical problem, so diabetes, high blood pressure, um, sleep apnea, those are some of the common medically related uh, problems with obesity would qualify. And this is the Ruin Y gastric bypass. This is one of the procedures that we perform at the hospital. Um, it's the gold standard procedure. It's been around for the last four decades, a long time. And uh, basically the outcomes of the gastric bypass um, are sustained for a long period of time, over a lifetime. And what we've noticed doing the surgery, it decreases appetite. There's a hormone that's secreted from the stomach that uh, makes you feel hungry and it's called a ghrelin. Uh, not to be confused with gremlins, but, <laughs> but it could be a little gremlin in your stomach saying, you know, I'm starving, you know, I really need to eat something. And that's secreted from the stomach. And by creating a small stomach, um, it reduces the amount of ghrelin produced in your body so you don't feel as hungry. Um, what we've noticed um, with this operation is it helps to cure type 2 diabetes. And this is not just by weight loss itself, it's actually a physiological mechanism just by bypassing an area of the intestines, it looks like um, our bodies are more sensitive to insulin. So if you have type 2 diabetes, your blood sugars actually start to normalize within days after surgery. It's not, not months with weight loss, it's actually a, f a physiological change with the change in the anatomy. Um, the excess weight on average is about 75% of somebody's excess weight. So if you're 100 pounds overweight, you lose on average about 75 pounds. And this is a, a little um, animation of the old time surgery, which is a big open operation. Um, now we do it with small, tiny incisions. Um, we inflate the abdomen so we can see on the inside and use a camera. And what we do is create a small stomach pouch at the top. Um, and then we disconnect the small intestine from the rest of the stomach and connect it up to this small stomach pouch. And that's called what's called a roux limb. And roux uh, in French, R-U-E means street, so it's basically a new highway where the food now goes through immediately after the stomach pouch. So now the new anatomy, basically the food goes down, the small stomach, and into these, this new limb of intestine and basically bypasses this, is this area of the stomach and small bowel. So it looks kind of like a Y, right? Like this. So that's why it's called Roux and Y gastric bypass. Um, the other procedure that we perform um, is something called the sleeve gastrectomy. And uh, basically, what it is is just removing a large portion of the stomach and making the stomach a lot smaller. And these patients tend to lose about 65% of their excess body weight, so about 65 pounds per 100. It also decreases appetite because the area that produces that, that pesky hormone ghrelin is located right here. Um, and so that's basically decreased in these patients as well. And this is a uh, little video of the sleeve gastrectomy. It's just simply removing a large portion of stomach there. And, you know, all of these operations potentially can fail. I mean, it's not foolproof. And that's why diet and exercise is key to maintain these. And it's really, you should think of these operations as a tool to help you achieve your goals and not try and work against it. Otherwise, obviously, you'll fail. Um, but this is basically the sleeve. So those are the two procedures that we perform. There's no bypass in this one. And this one, we actually remove part of the stomach. So this study is an interest, interesting study. It's of 6,000 patients, and there's two groups, the uh, patients who had surgery and those who did not have surgery. Um, and basically, they study them over a period 
of 10 years and actually looked at their mortality rates after either having surgery or staying at their same weight and not having surgery and trying to do the whole yo-yo thing. And it actually showed that uh, people in this study had nine times lower risk of dying if they had the surgery than if they didn't have the surgery at all. So if you know people who you know, are over 100 pounds overweight, they would definitely benefit from having the surgery instead of staying at their same weight because they will most likely die you know, young um, compared to patients who actually have the surgery. So when people say, you know, I don't want to do something that's um, scary, that I might die from, well, if you choose to stay your same weight and not have the surgery, then most likely you will die sooner than if you do have the surgery, which can save your life. So this is a pretty um, strong study there showing that bariatric surgery does save people's lives. This is um, just a whole schematic on appetite and what happens to appetite and hormones after bariatric surgery. And it, actually in JAMA, they had a whole um, series of articles in 2012 talking about bariatric surgery and the changes in appetite from bariatric surgery. And these are a couple studies in this uh, magazine. Basically, this one talks about health benefits of gastric bypass surgery after six years. And they had 1100, over 1,100 patients. They had three study arms, those that had gastric bypass, those who did not have any surgery, um, and those who, um, and then who did not have any weight loss, and those that did not want to have surgery. And basically in those three groups, um, weight loss was obviously superior in the gastric bypass group and diabetes remission after surgery was 62% in the, in the group that had bariatric surgery compared to the other two groups. Um, so definitely uh, gastric bypass surgery can help save lives and help those that have diabetes for sure. This one um, is health benefits of gastric bypass surgery after six years. And basically it showed that between six to 20 years after bariatric surgery, um, patients who had surgery actually had decreased healthcare costs. Imagine not having to pay for diabetes meds, high blood pressure medications, all the different treatments that you have to go to the hospital for, how much money basically you save from not having to have all those medical problems. And finally, so no longer boring you with all the fancy <laughs> scientific stuff, um, this is our bariatric program. Um, I'm really proud with, of the program that we have at Cedar Park Regional. We have a very multidisciplinary approach to bariatric surgery. It's not just the surgeons that do all the work, it's everybody else that's a part of the team. And um, we have Laverne Chavez, who is our support group leader. And um, she's been instrumental in leading our support groups every month at the hospital. Um, and it's for patients who haven't had surgery yet and those who had surgery. Um, there's Lindsay Johnson, who's our uh, lead physical therapist and director, and she basically helps to teach the exercise classes that everybody has to go through prior to surgery. Um, we work with primary care physicians, obviously, as well, um, to adjust medications along the way. And then we have our dietitians. Uh, Karen Salinas, I think, is here. Doreen Gray um, is also one of our dietitians who teaches the classes. And Marianne also sees our patients on the floors. And then uh, last but not least, Diana Campos, also our great bariatric coordinator, um, who is definitely instrumental in all the patients' lives um, from pre-surgery to surgery to after surgery. And of course, uh, myself and Dr. Abondo uh, help uh, you know, performing the surgeries, basically. And these are some of our outcomes. Um, one cool little fact that I learned um, with a tally of how much weight loss we've lost um, over the past five years is 3.5 tons of weight. <laughs> All our patients have lost a combined 3.5 tons. So that's a lot of weight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so definitely we have something good going here, I think. Um, also with the medical problems, diabetes improvement, 100%. 
in our patients, high blood pressure improvement, 90%, high cholesterol, 85%, sleep apnea reduction, 98%. So definitely we have a high reduction in uh, medical problems related to obesity. And this is an average, I think these, this number is actually higher now, we, we don't have it up to date currently, but this is as of uh, like March of this year. Um, typically our patients lose an average, and this is both the bypass and the sleeve, about 44% of their excess weight at two to four months, 56% about five to seven months after surgery, 65% at one year, and 75% at two years. And the national average for the sleeve is about 65% and the bypass is 75%. So definitely um, we're above the average for those two combined. Um, this is our complication rate, so you know there, there has to be some complications potentially with any type of surgery. The only complication that we've had early on was uh, some, a uh, couple of patients had some bleeding, um, which since um, doing something with the surgery, which is doing an endoscopy after surgery, we've had zero bleeds since then. Um, leak, zero percent, which is leakage from any of the connections. Um, blood clots in the legs or blood clots in the lungs, zero uh, percent, and that's why we tell our patients to walk every four hours after surgery, walk a few hours after surgery, and then walk every four hours after surgery. So actually, Diana and I always ask the patients, so what are the two things you have to do after surgery? And the first one is walk, and then the second one is to take deep breaths. So um, we haven't had any problems with that. Um, and then death rate, which is always a scary one, 0%. So I gotta knock on wood on that one, but um, definitely we've had really good results um, on all our patients. Um, and then talking about robotics, um, and laparoscopic surgery. Basically what robotics is, and this is just a little diagram of what it looks like in the operating room for the robot. Basically you have a console here and then you have these robotic arms which is inserted into those small trocars that I had shown you in one of the animations. And basically um, the patient sitting right here um, and we have the surgeon here at the console, so we're not like down the street getting a cup of coffee and operating on you or anything. We're right there in the same room. Um, we actually have an OR, our OR team back there, and we're happy that they're here and they do a lot. Of, they do all the robotics and uh, help with that in the operating room. Um, Hana back there is our bariatric um, coordinator for for the hospital. <laughs> um, so. Basically, we are able to control these fine tips of instruments and do um, all our connections under fine visualization with control of your, using your fingertips to control the tips of the instruments. And that definitely helps with doing uh, the surgeries. Um, we, uh, myself and Dr. Bondo, were the first surgeons in Central Texas to complete a fully robotic gastric bypass in 2010. So we've been doing uh, robotic gastric bypasses since then, uh, and we've worked on the robot prior to that when we were in Los Angeles, but definitely we were the first to bring that here to uh, Central Texas. Um, robotic surgery um, basically decreases complication rates, and it decreases all those different things that I had mentioned, leakage and things like that, and so we've added that to uh, doing bariatric surgery. So continue to improving outcomes for patients. And really when, when you think about the death rate for a bariatric operation, um, it's about 0.25%. And to put that into perspective, if any of you had your gallbladder removed, it's about the same, the death rate is about the same as that. So um, definitely when people say it's scary, um, the safety has definitely improved with doing laparoscopic and robotic surgery. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I also wanted to introduce um, somebody here as well who's also a personal trainer, um, Mohammed Wayusi. He's back there. He has his own personal training studio as well, um, as well as Dixie Stanforth. I mean, awesome talk, you know, implementing exercise into your daily routine. Um, and we're going to take a little break right now uh, before the, the fashion show begins. So um, 
you guys can have some refreshments and then we'll have a little intermission.